Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the king of armor destruction, the armor wizard, Zap Zap. We have a body armor demo slash review today. In full transparency, Hanlon Tactical Studio sent me over a pair of their level four plates to destroy with no strings attached. This particular level four from them is their hexagon tile array plate. It is 1.338 inches thick, rather thick, 34 millimeters for those across the pond, approximately six pounds, 11 ounces, or 3.03 kilograms. It is multi-curve. You can see all those nice, sexy curves there. Typically with a single curve, you have one rolling curve right here. With multi-curve, you have that curve there. You typically have another curve here and sometimes more curvatures depending on the model. Now, if you're a newcomer to the channel, here comes the long-winded speech. Over here on my channel, we do things completely different than a majority of everyone else on YouTube. After all, this is life-saving equipment or personal protection equipment that you could depend on to save your life. Since this is rifle armor, we shoot at 45 feet. We also shoot at zero degrees because that represents a worst case scenario. If there's anything you can take away from any of my testing, it is we're after worst case. Given that, if we shoot some kind of insane projectile going super fast and it stops it at 45 feet, you know at a distance that round will not be a threat. It's around 42, 45 degrees outside today. We will use our Pro Chrono Pal Digital DLX because again, we need to know the velocity of that round. I do believe there was another content creator at one time who said he can't make bullets do things they're not supposed to do. And you certainly can by downloading them or using the completely wrong projectile for a given threat standard. Since this does employ a strike face per the NIJ, we've gone ahead and dropped each panel on its face two times as a preconditioning test. We do have the third plate that we did not drop in case we do need it. After we've done our drop test, we mark a DT indicating that we've done so. And then we do a torque test. That's where we take each opposing ed end of the plate and apply pressure to try to listen for any cracks and if we don't hear any crack we mark it with a tq so both of these plates pass with flying colors you'll note on this particular panel i have this white outline right here based on the size and shape of our hexagon tiles it is really hard to get all the way to the complete edge of the plate so what usually happens is there is a foam ring or a non-ballistic rated material that makes up the edge usually behind it is our polyethylene all the way to the edge but this is a foam like border so we try to mark that on here so that we know when we're taking shots we mark off two inches that we're staying inside of the ceramic for that threat profile for all the NIJ protocols, there's no laws or requirements that say you can't do this because the NIJ will not shoot closer than two inches from the edge. For level four, it's only one round of M2 AP and it's actually gonna be center of mass. So that's something you should look for when researching armor is that if a manufacturer's plate is lighter than a competitor's, you look for specific wording to ensure that that ceramic strike face extends all the way out to the edge or the manufacturer calls out that they are using a non-ballistic foam ring so that you know that you are getting less coverage for the given size. We also use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina number one clay. That acts as our compressible media and just a solid object to mount the plate against. If you allow the plate to, sl to swing on like a two by four or up against something and it's not strapped into there, that energy is not imparted into the plate. So again, we're not seeing worst case scenario. It's only 40 to 45 degrees outside today. And in order for that clay to give us actual certifiable back face, we have to heat that up to 100 degrees. And then you drop a ball on it and you measure the indent. And we're not gonna do that out here. So we're just looking for what a general representation of back face could be. If you see something in my clay going, you know, 60 plus millimeters in actual NIJ clay, that would be failing. I also want to mention that I am not an NIJ lab. So if you see me stop a threat or a threat penetrates, you should always defer to the manufacturer to produce accredited NIJ lab results for that threat. And on the flip side, if you're the manufacturer and you see me stop M993 or M995 or some crazy threat going insane velocity, you should send that off to a lab and have that as a special rifle threat on your plate. And finally, we put a spreadsheet here at the beginning that we kind of foreshadow all the threats that we're gonna shoot at it. And in the end, we mark all the velocities and penetrations and we do a teardown because a lot of my followers are interested to see what the inside of our plate looks like. Plate number one is strapped in and ready to take its first hits. Being that this is a tile array plate, some of the advantages to a tile array versus a monolithic strike face, in theory, they can take more multi-hit shots because crack propagation from subsequent shots only would spread 
to the tiles that were directly impacted and other tiles should remain intact. That also depends on how well everything is bonded together. We have tested Hanlon's plates in the past. He has a monolithic strike face level four that's done very, very well. So first up, we've got our 24 inch TC compass and 300 Winchester Magnum because we're gonna shoot M2AP. And for the NIJ spec, it calls for 2880 feet per second. And you won't see that out of a 22 inch 1903 or 24 inch M1 Grand with any surplus ammunition. Again, the NIJ was after a pretty much worst case scenario in that. So they loaded these a little hotter. So in order to get that velocity, we've done 300 Winchester Magnum. This is our M2AP, 163 grain full metal jacket with a very hard steel core in there. We have three normal pressure, and then this guy here with the nickel case is our plus P plus 300 wind chad. We should see over 3,200 feet per second with that guy. We'll load him in a second since this is only a four round magazine. Thirty-two hundred plus. Woo e Batman. Pretty easy shot placement on here because of this cover. Shot number one was center of mass. Shot number two, then three. That was a little close towards that theoretical edge of ceramic, and then our plus B plus shot was there. Based on how much this plate feels like there's left, we're gonna take some five five six shots on this first plate. Place those bets in the comments below. Uh oh Raggy, we had one pass through on that second shot of M2AP. Now, it is pretty close to that foam ring there, so it could have traversed upwards or something, I'm not quite sure. You can see the actual jacket is sticking on the back, but our plus P plus shot was actually stopped. You can kind of see our plates coming apart a little bit, but it's still in one piece. So three out of four, <laughs> not too shabby there. Even that one on this edge was stopped. So sometimes it just depends on which way that bullet traverses. I don't lot or control any of the M2AP that I have. Pretty much I buy it when I find it and I don't know where it came from. So there could be core hardness differences in them, hard to say. As far as our back face goes, I mean, that was only 15 millimeters. That was rather spread out. This one over here on the corner is probably the worst at 36 millimeters, but that one right there in the middle, 11 millimeters, and the back face, as you can see, is very controlled. I think you all would agree that plate number one is severely weakened after taking four hits of M2AP. Now for shits and giggles, we're gonna throw our 5.56 at it. This is our 22 inch TC compass. So again, maximum real world velocity. We have our M193, that's our 55 grain full metal jacket. Then we have M855, that is our 62 grain full metal jacket with a conical steel penetrating tip. Then we have M855A1, that is the US Army's current issue ball round all the way down to basic, has a larger and hardo, harder arrowhead steel tip. We have four rounds of that. It's gonna be hard for me to grab with my gloves here. It's in the end of that. Good shooting Deacon. Now our M855, the top of the plate. And that's it. We'll have to make any corrections post editing for any of these shot uh, discrepancies. Sometimes that's the downside of not coming down after everyone and marking them. But our M855 shots number one and two are up here. 
and then four, and then Deacon shot the M193, number one, two, and then three and four, I think he might have stacked them right on top of each other. I'm not too sure, I again apologize. Then our M855A1, we had one, two, three, and then I think the fourth one was right here. Again, we'll double check, place those bets in the comments below. Come on, little plate. No pass-throughs. Again, this is a level four plate, so it's built to stop armor-piercing threats, and it doesn't actually encompass any of the lower threats per the rating, so you know it's always a gamble. But we stacked quite a bit of hits on this plate, and they have been stopped. Even wherever Deacon shot that M193, if he stacked two of them on top of each other, stopped it. Plate number two is ready to rock and roll. And given how well that first plate did against our plus P plus wind chad, we brought out the holy grail of armor piercing threats, at least until I can get my hands in 6.8. This is our 762 NATO M993, 130 grains with a tungsten core. Very, very nasty. We're gonna start off with our 13 inch SCAR 17S SBR here. Got the suppressor up front. This was built on an Imperial Arms receiver. We've brought back out the 300 wind chad and two of my favorite loads. We've got our M14 A1 API. Mr. Flashy Flashy makes a very bright flash. Very cool to watch in slow-mo. I wish I had a camera with some higher frame rates. Then we've got M80 A1. That is the US Army's current issue ball round in 7.62 NATO. Again, I've got it loaded in 300 Winchester Magnum. We should see almost 3,500 feet per second from that based on what we've done before. Nice. So much fire, so satisfying. So much fire, so satisfying. We've got five more shots on plate number two. Then we'll go down and see what happened and we'll tear these down and get you on your way. We've got more of our M14 A1 API. We had this just in 7.62 NATO. We have the Brass Sabo round and the API from SBR. Pick those up from Denver Bullets. And then we've got M61 AP or P80 black tip. Early 1950s armor piercing round. Not as effective in my opinion as M2 AP. Our shot of M993 from the 13 inch was right there. Then our M80A1 plus P plus was right there. Then the M14A1 API there and there. Another API shot there. The SBR, the SBR API, and our M61P80 black tip. Place those bets in the comments below. Uh oh, Raggy, we have one penetration from the M993. We will confirm when we do the tear down. We have some back face foam on the back here, but you can see where the M993 penetrated. Otherwise, no penetrations. And our dimpling is very minor. Our plus P plus shots have the largest indentation, but pretty downright amazing that this plate can do that. I will say, I think the first plate with the monolithic strike face held up a little better as lamination wise goes, but very impressive from this plate. Paging Dr. Matt to surgery. Now for fan favorite, our teardown. That's where we get to see what the inside of our plates look like. Here was plate number two. Confirmed our only penetration was from that M993 shot. We have a blunt force trauma foam on the back, right around 215 thousandths thick. 
We have our polyethylene backer. It is pressed very, very well. All that energy on this plate, and you can see a majority of it is still together. I measured that right around 505 thousandths. You can see quite a bit of these hits are either stopping in the polyethylene, and then some of the more advanced ones are getting a little deeper depending on the degradation of the plate there. Fairly impressive. Then we go to our strike face that we see right here. We're using our hexagon tiles. I'm not sure if these are silicon carbide or boron carbide. I think they're silicon carbide based on the weight. Measured those right around 493 thousandths. A little thick for what I've seen before. We do have a drop face foam on there as well. Looks like looks to be the same material that we're using on the back. I think that was right around 10 thousandths thick. I'm not sure where my little piece went, but I had measured that out. But as we mentioned, this is the advantage of a tile array plate is look at how much of the tiles remain on here. Now, one disadvantage is if you don't have the ability to have these little hexagon tiles cut to a certain size, we have this foam ring on the outside and I measured that right around 794 thousandths and it is a little more in some areas depending on where the mosaics end. But otherwise, I mean, this whole side of the plate was left the backer and front side did come apart fairly easily after all those hits. I would like to see some better adhesion of this to that, but otherwise pretty solid. And then on plate number one, same construction, got the back face foam. Our only penetration was that hit of M2AP for some reason. Again, this area tends to be pretty weak for some reason. I'm not sure if it's the angle of the curvature right there, but there is our jacket sticking through there. My son did place two hits of m9 or m193 next to that m2 ap and that goes to show how good the polyethylene is that hanlon is using because it took two of those right next to an already shot already done shot of m2 ap and it stopped it here is our strike face on that plate there's a lot less of our ceramic left but you can see there's still quite a bit of them in here and that's all she wrote folks we gotta wrap this one up quick because it's been raining on and off all day. So I gotta get my equipment put away before it gets too wet. But I'm rather impressed with our hexagon tile array plate from Hanlon Tactical Studios. We stopped a barrage of all sorts of AP threats. We even stopped two rounds of M193 in close proximity to a shot of M2 AP. And that goes to show you how high of quality polyethylene that Hanlon Tactical Studios is using. If I had to complain about anything on this plate, it would be that because it is a hexagon tile ray plate that we don't have a complete edge to edge strike face. On the flip side, he does offer a plate that has complete edge to edge in a monolithic strike face setup. And that one did rather well last time we stopped it, stopping almost the same amount of threats that this one did. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible because there's a lot that goes into them. Number one is my wife and son who are out here getting wet with me and helping me take some shots on those plates. Number two is my Patreon and subscribe star fans and YouTube channel memberships. I have a link tree in the description below, like various different contact creators. And those are links that can help me earn sales commissions. They cost you nothing and what I do with all those funds is put them right back in the channel because a lot of this does get very expensive. I've added a neat little counter in the top corner here that shows you a valuation of the armor that we've destroyed on the channel starting here in 2023. Number three is Hanlon Tactical Studio. Again, in full transparency, sent us over this plate to destroy with no strings attached. And of course, number four is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.